Well, glory to God. Welcome to our live online service. Glory to God. We're glad you're with us. And we know that many of us are watching, many of you are watching us live, and then others may watch at a later time. But we are so glad to have you at our Wednesday night service, Our Power. We're, we're endeavoring to not do anything any different than we normally do. And, of course, the, this is almost everybody here. There's four or five out there, you know, people in the sound booth and so forth as we obey the government regulations. But uh, we believe God with you. We're standing with you, and we're all going to come through this thing victorious as God keeps us and protects us and blesses us in the midst of this situation. Can you say amen? Amen. Thank you. Praise God. About, um, about three months ago, our dear friend Matthew Farmer contacted us and, uh, and told us that he wanted to just come and do a project for us at our house. And so, and so he, he came and he did. Actually, he put up a backsplash at our house. It's beautiful. If you, if you want to see it, you can look at my Facebook page because I put a picture of that up there. And uh, so this was done. You know, we had this all scheduled back some time. And he told me that he was, when he was coming on a Monday and Tuesday, then he'd stay with us on Wednesday and leave Thursday. And I said, well, hey, we want you to preach Wednesday night. So we're just going to do things absolutely like we intended to do. And uh, Matthew, and of course, has uh, worked with us. We worked together for 17 years. Is that right? Is that, is that right? You don't know, do you? Two thousand four to two thousand thirteen, praise God. Ninety four to two thousand three, whatever that is, long time, amen. <laughs> and, uh, and he was with us when we moved into this building much later. And uh, matter of fact, uh, I promise you, he knows a lot more about this building than I do. <laughs> There's not a, not a corner of it that he doesn't understand because in the beginning days, you know, we were doing a, a lot of things to upgrade it and maintain it and so forth. He is, uh, uh, we were blessed, blessed, blessed to have him here, and uh, we served together in the ministry. And so he's, he's a blessing, and he and Donna and these three beautiful kids, Eric, Hannah, and Ella. And uh, by the way, last week, my, somebody, my granddaughter put on there, said, somebody better wave at these grandkids. So if you're out there, grandkids, or hi, Matthew, I mean, Matthew, hi, that's you, Matthew. Hi, <laughs> one of my grandkids. <laughs> hi, Jeremiah. Hi, Judah. Praise God. Good to see you guys. Glory to God. Huh? And Matthew, too. Yeah, Matthew is my grandson. Glory to God. Praise God. Anyway, we are so glad he's here. Matt, today, you know, they serve with his brother James, James and Melissa, of course. Uh, we all know them from Cleveland Christian Fellowship, and they all, we also work together with them in the ministry. They're doing a tremendous, tremendous job at the Lord's Church in Memphis. Uh, technically, they're in uh, uh, Bartlett, Tennessee. That's a suburb of Memphis, Tennessee. The Lord's Church, Matthew is the associate pastor, and Donnie is the associate pastor and children's pastor. And uh, like I said, these guys, we just can't tell you how much we love them and appreciate them, and, and they mean the world to us. So he's going to come and bring the word to us tonight. And so open up your heart to receive whatever God wants to minister to us through Reverend Matthew Farmer. Come on, buddy. Come on and preach the word. Glory to God. Have your way. Thank you so much. That was great music, guys. Good job. Amen. So good to see everyone. I'm so blessed to be here. So honored. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And um, there's so many, many memories just in this room. Uh, I remember the first time my wife came, she was sitting right over there. And, uh, of course, I was drawn to her and wanted to go see her. I, I remember that for the first time. I remember my mom standing right here when Pastor Mark dedicated my son. Uh, I remember uh, burning a hole in my leg right back there when I dropped a soldering iron on my leg. Um, I remember falling through the roof right there. There's there a hole right there when I set this light fixture on fire. And the world was fun at that moment. I remember, of course, my friends, and I'm so honored. Thank you. And all those that are watching that um, aren't here, I, I'm sorry that I'm missing you, seeing you here tonight, but thank you so much. You're, you're always in my heart, and I appreciate you so very much. You didn't know, but you're looking at a champion in the third grade of a three-legged race right here. <laughs> right? I'm the man. I, I won the three-legged race. Have you ever done the three-legged race? That is lots of fun especially when you want to go two different directions. Um, you fall down very easily. Uh, it's hard to go two different directions when you're tied together, isn't it? So many comedy movies where people are chained together, you know, and they're trying to get away. When our, our scripture that we want to look at tonight is in Amos chapter 3, verses number 3, Amos 3, 3. And then the King James, it says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? 
The New Living says, Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? The message says, Do two people walk hand in hand if they aren't going in the same place? It is, I need to pull it down some. My, uh, my long beard is scratching it. I don't look as, as handsome as Daniel back there with his ZZ Top beard going on. Praise God. Well, I would never come out and just say, God, I disagree with you. God, I don't believe you. You wouldn't do that either, would you? However, sometimes Christians do that unconsciously. When words slip out of their mouth like, I can't do it, or I'm sick, or I'm broke, or there's no way, no how. We're unconsciously disagreeing with the God when we do that. And that's not something you want to do. But when you talk like a loser, when you think you're a loser, if you, if you always say you're a loser, guess what's going to happen? You'll be a loser. I don't want, God doesn't want you to be a loser, but you're disagreeing with him when you're speaking those words. If God really wants to help us and bless us, then why don't we have it? Because we have to apply it to our life. It's not automatically ours. We have to hear the word, agree with it, and make it so in our lives. Amen? The power to God to rescue, to heal, to deliver, to save is available when you line yourself up with God. When what is coming out of your mouth lines up with what the word says. You have to possess it. You have to claim it. And you have to act it and do it. Amen? Hilton Sutton said, God is ready to do what he said he would do. We only need to give him an opportunity to do it. If I ask Brother Doug to help me paint a room, I I have a chance to paint quite often now, Doug. But when I have a chance to, to, to paint a room, if I said, Doug, would you help me paint this room? And I give him no brush, no bucket, no paint, no nothing. And what's Doug supposed to do? Look at it? Hey, it's It's painted. No, uh, we need to give God something to work with. And when we speak his word, we're giving him something to work with because he's already accomplished it for us. He wants us to be in agreement with us. We need to give him the opportunity, and we're not doing that when we're contradicting what he says, when we're not in agreement with what he says. It's not enough just to simply hear and know God's word. We must agree with it and take his word. That's when we can move into the faith realm and believe in in those things that he's promised us that we can obtain those things. Amen. If we reject God's word in one area, then you aren't walking in agreement with him. If, If you're saying, I can't do it, there's no way, I'm broke. Every Tuesday when it rains, my knee hurts or, or whatever it is, we're, 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 we're disagreeing with what his word says. If you reject him, you, you can't be in agreement with him. Spiritual truth is the final authority, and it trumps natural facts. Everything that's going on in the, in the world right now, the spiritual truth trumps these natural facts. When a spiritual truth is believed, it will always change the natural facts. When spiritual truths are believed, they will always become a reality in our lives. Well, how do we know what these spiritual truths are? Well... God reveals them when we open up his word, when we spend time in his word and we meditate by that stream, when we make that at home on the inside of us. He he opens those truths up to us. What he says is the truth and, and, and what he says is right. It's true and it trumps all other opinions. It trumps all other thoughts, all other advice. It trumps what your mama told you. It trumps what your boss told you. It trumps what your checkbook told you. It trumps what your doctor told you, although we need to follow our doctor's orders. Amen. But when we're standing in faith, when we're standing on his word, and let me tell you something. In every circumstance, in every case of faith, there are three witnesses. Number one, what God declares. The first witness is what God declares. He said that we're strength that we have healing, that he cares about us, that our heart is mended, that we have the mind of Christ, that we're good looking, or whatever it is, what God declares. Some of you need to say that more often. Amen. The second thing is 
what the symptoms declare. The symptoms, the pain, the problem, the issue, the, the person that you don't want to deal with, the, whatever the issue is going on. And the third thing is what you declare. Now we have what God declares, what the symptom declares, and what you declare. Only two of those things can be in agreement. And if you're in agreement with what the symptom is, then you're not in agreement with what God is saying. We need to be in agreement with what God declares. Amen? If you are in agreement with what God declares and you believe His Word, it's going, it's going to prevail in your life. Or you can believe your circumstances, and guess what? Those will prevail in your life. God's word says you're happy. God's word says you have direction. God's word says that you have healing. God's word says that you're, you have more than enough. God's word says the crooked places are made straight and the rough places are made smooth. And then you, you say, well, that's good, brother, and you close the book and you say, but I feel like this today. Oh, when I got out of bed or, or whatever you're, you're saying that's coming out of your mouth. Those little things matter. Amen. We know that in Mark chapter 11, verses 22, it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And that's what Jesus spoke. Jesus told his disciples to have faith in God. He wasn't referring to just general faith. He was referring to the God kind of faith. Well, that God kind of faith takes two parts. It takes believing in your heart, and it takes confessing with your mouth. Praise God, I'm on fire. Praise God. Shake that bush one more time, brother. When you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, that's where faith happens. And that's when we're in agreement with his word. We know that in Romans chapter 8, verses 8 through 10, it says, in verse number 10, it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We know that in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. It is very important what we say. It is very important that it lines up with what God said. Especially in this turbulent time. My wife went to Walmart the other day and a woman had a, a Walmart bag on her head and Walmart bags on her hands and Walmart bags on her feet. When things are going on out in the world, we need to make sure that we're lining up with what the Word says. That we're, we need to act in, in, in accordance to the law. We need to act with wisdom. But we need to act also in speaking what His Word says over us. Amen? In Numbers chapter 13, verses 27 through, Numbers 13, 27 through 29, when the, the men who went out and they saw the promised land and they came back, is this microphone give me trouble? Praise God. In ver, Numbers 13, verses 27 through 20, man, I can sing with this microphone. Man. And they told him, and they came back and they said, We went into the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. They were in agreement with God right then, weren't they? And they kept talking, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strange, or excuse me, strong. They might have been strange too. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites people dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the, dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along, sea along the banks of the Jordan. How many times did God tell the children of Israel they could have that land? Many, 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 many times. About 101 times is what part that I read there. Have you, those parents out there, how many times have you told your kids to pick their Legos up out of the floor? Eric, if you're listening, thank you for picking your Legos up out of the floor. How many times have you told your kid over and over and you say, I told you to do that. I told you to do that. And God was telling these children of Israel, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. And, and what did they keep coming back? I can't. I can't. I can't. There's no way. We can't get through this. We're going to die. They had that high-pitched voice when they said that. 
They came back with an evil report. Numbers 11 and thir- in chapters 11 and 13, it says that the Israelites said what was in their hearts. They said that they couldn't take the promised land and that they, re- and they couldn't do it. Their report was evil. It was classified as an evil report. Why was it evil? Because it denied and contradicted God's report. When we speak things in our life and we're not in agreement with his, his word, we're speaking an evil report. The report was evil also because it discouraged the other people. Sometimes when we're walking around in public with our faces dragging on the ground because we're unhappy, how is that uplifting your brother? How is that showing the world who you are and that you're a child of God? And their evil was report was classif- the report was classified as evil because it wasn't in agreement with his word. What is your report? Is your report line up with him or does your report line up with the symptoms, with the issue, with the circumstance? That might have been a true statement in their lives when they said, there's big people out there. There's giants over there. But they could have continued with that and said something different. When people confess wrong things, those wrong things come to pass in their life. When I, uh, when I get sick, uh, this always happens to me, and, or it's, I'm always broke on Thursday. Those are evil reports. The children, of evil, excuse me, the children of Israel's report was a true statement of fact, but it was classified as an evil report because it was contradicting to God's word. It was saying that they can't do it. It wasn't in agreement with his word. It wasn't in line with his word. We will not rise above our confession. Our confession is that and should be in agreement with him. Many Christians are weak because they've never confessed who they are. In Psalms, we all know the Psalms chapter 91. In the Passion Translation in verses 9 and 10, it says, When our... When we live our lives within the shadow of God most high, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? In this world of this turbulent world that's going on right now, God is our protection. He's he's taking care of us. He's lifting in us. No matter what goes on in the world, we're blessed. We're coming out of this blessed. We're coming out of this prosperous. Amen. There's, when we say things like, I can't, there's no way, everything I touch it breaks, I'm so stupid. Man, I look ugly today. Man, my, oh, this hurts. I can't do it now. I don't know what I'm going to do. We never have enough money. We're getting deeper in debt every day. There's a time to keep quiet. If you don't have anything good to say, what a thumper say, don't say it at all. That was for you, Donna. There's times where if 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 you can't speak what the word is gonna say, don't let the other thing come out. Don't be in agreement with the other circumstance. Don't be in agreement with the issue or the symptom. Be in agreement with what his word said. So if you're not in that faith place yet, you can be. But don't let the other thing come out. Amen? It's how we should talk every, in everyday life and in the little things. Most people don't realize that, that they're speaking against God word, God's word and those idle words, those little things, those little comments. I remember Brother Hagen, he would, excuse me, I don't know the exact quote. I couldn't find it today, but a exact quote because he said it often, but he would often say, I haven't had a headache since March 13th, 1943 at Tuesday at five o'clock because he wouldn't let that headache take hold in his life. He may have had a symptom come on, but he didn't allow it. He didn't say, man, my head's killing me. Man, I don't know what I'm going to, he didn't allow it to go on in his life. I think of Brother Copeland. Brother Brother Copeland is a blessed man, but he doesn't let those little words come out of his mouth. You can see that's true because the evidence in his life. 
Amen? But anytime we confess weakness and failure, we're making a confession that disagrees with the God's word. In Romans chapter 4, verse number 17, God who caused life to the dead and caused those things which do not exist as though they were. We need to be saying the same things as God. God caused life to the dead things. You should call life to those dead things in your life. The, the money situation, the health situation, whatever's going on, God is in that. Not that he's doing that. He's healing you. He's taking care of you. He's prospering you. He's, he has the way out for you. He has, he's given you wisdom right now to find that way out. He's given you a direction right now. He's given you understanding. Your body's being touched right now. We need to call life to those things that are dead in our life. Amen? We need to go to the word if we're having an issue in this life, in this along this line, let's go to the Word, find knowledge about our situation, and about what belongs to us, what the Word says about that in my circumstance. Then we can agree with it. Then we can build those words into our heart through meditation, as we meditate on those things, as we as we dwell on those things, and we get those things deep down in our heart, and when they become at home on the inside of us. One of my favorite hobbies, I don't have very many hobbies. Uh, I go to work and I come home and eat. I love to eat. That's my hobby. Some people like fishing. Some people like other things. I like to eat, I like going out to eat. Um, I also like studying about space history. And so I always try to uh, throw a space history uh, a line into one of my messages. So you're blessed tonight to hear one. Praise God, aren't you excited? But there's several types of rocket propulsion. Now, don't worry, this isn't going over your head. It's very short. There's several types of rocket propulsion. If you think of a bottle rocket, that's a solid rocket propulsion. It has a solid chemical on the inside where it shoots off. Well, there's also liquid propulsion in an engine. Just These are just some of the ways. There's other ways. But where you combine two ingredients, set them on fire, and kablooey, you have a, a rocket. One of those types of liquid propulsion is hypergolic propulsion. And hypergolic uses two chemicals that when they touch each other, they explode. They don't need a, they don't need a, a lighting source. They don't need a flame. They don't need an igniter. You just touch those things. Anybody ever do that in chemistry lab and you blow your partner up? <laughs> well, when the Apollo lunar spacecraft landed on the moon... The only way they had to get off the moon was one chance with one rocket engine and one chance for that thing to fire. And they're on the moon in the vacuum of space, and all they had to do was open a valve, which allowed two chemicals to flow together to touch each other, and kablooey, they, la they lifted up off the surface. You might be saying, Matthew, what in the world are you talking about? The Apollo, hypergolic, write down hypergolic because you need this. Igniting spontaneously on mixing with another substance is what hypergolic means. When the two chemicals mix, one is a catalyst to the power and releases the power in it. My point of all of this is, are your words mixed with faith? Yes. Your words can be hypergolic. When you mix your words with faith and they're in agreement with what his word says, kablooey, things happen. God moves. Things happen. We're, one word from God can change everything. Yes. But remember, it's his word. So when you're speaking his word, things happen. No word of God is void of power, but the power in the word is not automatically released. That faith, that your faith releases that power when you speak that word. Amen? You speak that word. I, my words are in agreement with you, Father. Amen. That's why the devil fights so hard to, to keep the word separated from, uh, from us, to keep faith out of us. He's trying to keep you from, from mixing those two words, those things together. Because he knows when faith gets mixed with God's words, and he knows things happen, and he doesn't want that to happen. So he, he tries to get your, your mind off of it. He tries to, to deceive you. He tries to uh, annoy you. He tries to get you off 
off into your senses and to your feelings to where you're not automatically speaking his word. You speak his word. Don't allow the devil to take that hold. It's time for you to take hold and take action. Amen. A true confession of faith is agreeing with his word. And it doesn't seem whether it's a, it's, it's a true or natural fact. You're speaking life into that situation. You're speaking life into your body. You're speaking life into the issue. We're agreeing with what his word says. Just like it says in Amos, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Yes, Father, I can agree with what your word says. I choose to be in agreement with your word, God. I choose to be in agreement with what you said, not what the circumstance is. I choose to be in agreement with what you say, Father. I choose to say what you say in your word. Your word says I'm strengthened, that I'm healed, that I'm happy, that I'm whole, that I have direction. I have the mind of Christ. I know which way to go. I choose to deny the symptoms, the circumstances, the pain, and the problem. Amen. So if you're listening today and you have an issue in your life and you don't know... The issues, the circumstance that you've been agreeing with that circumstance more than what God says. Now is your chance. All you have to do is say, Father, forgive me. I'm choosing right now to speak your word. I'm choosing right now to believe what your word says. I'm choosing right now to speak life and faith and hope and healing into my life. Amen? Amen. Father, I just thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that you're strengthening everyone here, Father. I thank you that you're strengthening those that are listening right now on the Internet, on the inside with strength and mighty power on their inner man. They're strong to possess what you've given us, Father. And I thank you. I thank you that you're quickening them right now to rise up to see what you've given them, what you've promised them, the promised land that you've given them, that they can see that, that they're claiming that. They're taking hold of that right now. And I thank you for that, that they are strong to resist the report of the devil and I thank you father that right now in the name of Jesus they see those things that you have for them I thank you father I remember thank you Jesus I remember brother Keith Moore telling a story about a time when he was uh on the mission field and he came across a lady, a, a, a minister herself that was sick on the deathbed. She had some type of stomach cancer, something where she couldn't keep food down. And he said when she, he came into the room, she was a, a bag of bones. She couldn't speak. She was so weak. She could barely, barely even whisper. She couldn't keep food down. And that's what she was telling him. When I, she would whisper. And when he tells the story, he's whispering. But I'm not going to whisper just so the people on the internet can hear. But um, she would say things like, when I eat, I can't keep it down. It always comes up. And he knew this wasn't a time to preach at her. This was a time to, to, to build her up. This was a time to pray with her. And so he asked the, the Holy Spirit, what, what to say, what to say. And so he felt led on the inside to say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so on that deathbed, he just encouraged her. I encourage you, sister, say, I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And she just barely, barely could even get it out. And she could barely, barely even whisper it. And then he continued that to say, and when I eat, it stays down. And I, when I eat, I, uh, I'm growing and my body's getting healthier. And so he said when he left, she just continued along that line. And he said by the time he got outside, he could hear her screaming, I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. She grabbed hold of it. She claimed it as her. She called life to that body that was dying. She took hold of it. She received it by faith. And so several years later, he ran across someone at a conference, and they said, have you heard about sister so-and-so? He said, no, what's going on with her? And they said, she's happy. She's whole. She's blessed. And, and um, uh, she, he made a joke about her eating too much, and he said, she might need to hold off on that. Um, but she took hold of that. She grabbed hold of it and she claimed it as hers. And that's what we need to do in our life. Thank you, Father. Amen. I am strong in the Lord. Yes. I am able to possess all that he's given me. I'm going to stop being a whiner. I'm going to stop being a beggar. I'm going to stop being where I'm just pleading to God, please, 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 God. But I'm going to claim his word and be in agreement with his word and speak his word. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. If you would pray with me together. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how good you are. 
We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you today that I'm standing in agreement with what your word says. And all those that are listening on the internet are standing in agreement with what your word says. If it isn't true in their life at this moment, I thank you, Holy Spirit, on the inside, reminding them of the goodness of you, reminding them of the, uh, the things that you've accomplished in their lives and lead them to the scriptures that they, that they need to feed on and, and join in on. If you're listening out there on the internet and there's something going on in your body, today is your day to be happy. Today is your day to be whole. Today is your day to be blessed. All you have to do is grab hold of it and say, thank you, Jesus, it's mine. Thank you, Jesus, I choose to be in agreement with what you've accomplished for me. I choose to stand in agreement with what you've done for me. Amen. I thank you, Father, that it's real in their lives right now. I thank you, Father, that it's real in their lives right now. And we just thank you, Father. Amen. If you're out there and you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, today is your day to do that. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I choose you as my Lord and Savior. I choose you. I choose you today. And I just thank you. And just call into the church and just tell them what you've done. Tell them that you've made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you that those three things, being in agreement with, uh, with God's word, being in agreement with the symptoms, and, and, and who, what you're in agreement with. You can only be in agreement with two of those things. I want to encourage you, stay in agreement with what his word says. Amen. Amen. Well, I so much appreciate it. I, I know I'm cutting it a little bit short tonight, uh, but I thank you, Father, that for bringing me here today. I thank you, Pastor Mark, for allowing me to speak today. And I just thank you for all those that are listening. Today is your day. Amen. Take hold of his word and stand in agreement with you, with it. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. I think that's all I have, Pastor Mark. I really appreciate you allowing me to speak today. And um, praise God. Would you like me to turn it back over to you? Amen. Thank you. Great job, Matthew. Praise God. I was reminded of the scripture that says, uh, you know, it says, I have set life and death before you. Therefore, choose life. Blessing, life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. I like that. Those three witnesses. He says, whatever God says, what your circumstances say, and you can only agree with one of those. And when we agree with what God says, when we just say the same thing God says, and of course you, you know and I'm sure remember and realize that the word confession means to say the same thing or to agree with. And that's what we're doing, Matthew. And the word of God says, let the weak say I'm strong. Praise God. I declare that we are strong as a nation. We are strong as a people. We are strong individually. And at Cleveland Christian Fellowship, we are strong. Amen. Amen. God bless you. But we look forward to seeing you. Stay connected. We love you. If you need anything, be sure to call us. Most of you have our cell number and Matthews and Johns and, and Daniels and anybody else that you need to call. So uh, we love you. God bless you. And we'll connect again with you Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Jesus is Lord.